Hi, just wanted to share some initial thoughts with you on uh, my new concept, the uh, Startup Growth Compass, which is basically an organizational development framework for startups, taking them from idea to unicorn, or however far they can uh, take it. Good. Just to begin with, let's look at the typical successful startup journey. I cheated a bit, created the, uh, the graph, mostly just because the unicorn is really tough to draw, so I had to do that before uh, recording. But good, let's get to it. Uh, the four typical development phases that we are looking at for startups are ideation. This is where the idea is uh, created, the concept is developed. Basically, we are creating an appealing offer to take to market. So once we got that in place, we are moving into the test phase. This is where we want to do our proof of concept, proof of business. Basically, we want to find our market fit. What is it that we can sell to who? Good. Once we got that established, we want to grow the business. We want to scale the business. So we're moving into the scale phase. This is where we are taking our concept to reach its full potential, growing to new market, expanding and all that. At some point, we, we reach our fair market potential or our full market potential, whatever the concept can carry. And we move into the improve phase. The improve phase is typically what happens before you exit or IPO the company, sell it or take it to the stock market. And this is where we want to improve the bottom line and, and, and really focus on that working with methods as lean, continuous improvement, all these things, but basically just want to optimize the business. Good. So, at ideation, uh, basically, really wise we're at zero, but then the conscious looking inward and all these things. At some point, we have created the appealing offer and we want to test it to market, that is costing. We want to use funding, we want to raise money in order to do the testing phase. This phase is the uh, pre-seed. Good. Uh, once we, uh, and in order to, to find the market fit, we want to raise funding again. This time it's the seed stage. So once we have established the market fit and are looking to scale the business, we want to raise funding in order to grow the business. This is when we are looking at this series A, B, C and so forth, however many you might need in order to gain the full market potential. And then as mentioned at the improved stage, we are typically looking at the IPO or exit scenario. Good. Of course, there's also a bit of risk involved in all these things. And the value of debt, where most organizations go to die, is at the market fit stage. Basically because they can't. Uh, there is no market for their solution, they can't sell it, or however uh, the, the situations might be. Good. That's the typical successful startup journey. What I will now do is I'll flip it around to take the inside out perspective and look at so then what is needed from a organization development perspective. Because what is really interesting in working with, uh, with venture uh, is the, uh, the, the deep connection to external money. Because what we do see is that the different, different funding stages is connected to this more or less the same metrics for most of the businesses. Meaning that we can actually create a somehow uh, generic tool in order to what is how we optimize the organization for the specific development phase. Thanks. So here we are. What we have behind me is the uh, Startup Growth Compass, or at least the framework of it. And again, I cheated a bit as the unicorn is just really hard to draw. Good. So what I've done is taken the four development phases that we had at the bottom before and moved them into a two by two model to explain the uh, startup journey from an inside out and organizational development perspective. As mentioned before, what is really interesting in this venture game is that it's so closely connected to funding rounds and that these funding rounds have some pretty generic KPIs that we want to change in order to reach the specific level of the funding rounds, meaning that we can also start looking at the, what we want to uh, attain from an organizational perspective in a, in a more generic manner. Good. 
So starting out, the ideation phase. And from ideation we go to test, from test we go to scale, from scale we go to improve, and we can actually go from improve to ideation, but I'll keep that story for another time. Uh, the interesting part, or one of the interesting parts about this framework is once you start looking at the scales. Good. So at ideation, we are working with an internal focus. Our solution is not a market yet. We're not getting customer's feedback. We're not trying to sell it either. We're just trying to come up with something cool. Yeah, that's why the internal focus. The second uh, perspective is uh, that it's, uh, we're working with full flexibility. There is no solution yet. We're trying to come up with it and we are totally flexible to take it in whatever direction makes sense meaning adding new features, new value proposition, approaching different markets, uh, should we do hardware, uh, and so forth. All these things up in the air, what we're trying to come up with. At some point, we reach the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the concept that we want to work with, that we want to take to market, and we, look to the, or we go to the test phase. At this point, we want to test in the market, we are working with a market orientation or an external orientation, you could also say. The big change from internal to external, but still full flexibility. At this point, we are testing our concept in market, talking to customers, talking to partners and all these things. And every time we get feedback, we take it back. We look if we should iterate, if we should build new features, features to the solution, try different segments. All these things are still up in the air, but we're in market now. We're trying to push it and see if there is a, a demand from potential customers. Once we reach the, uh, the, uh, the market fit, we find, okay, this is where our most suitable market is and what the solution should be. We want to scale it. At that point, we move, we're still working with a market orientation and external orientation, trying to push it in market, but we move from flexibility to focus, meaning once we want to scale the business, there's no longer the opportunity to go back and iterate or change. So you can build small new features, but it's, it's a matter of you knowing what you're selling, you knowing whom you're selling it to, and you want to push it and you want to push it fast. You want to compete. And basically also from a leadership perspective, there's a bit of hard bombing at this point. And the interesting part about that is that that is totally opposite to what gives you success at the early stage. But I'll come back to that. Just want to get to the last point as well. From scale, at some point we reach our fair market share and we're moving from uh, the market to an internal focus again. We still want to keep our revenue. We still want to keep the interaction that we have with customers, but we now also know that there aren't much more potential for the solution that we have. And it's much more a matter of improving what we do so at this point, again, working with Lean and all these things in order to optimize the organization to create a better bottom line, and at the end, oh, sorry, at the end, to get the best uh, deal once we try to IPO or exit the company. Good. The second thing that I find truly interesting about this framework is how these values are competing, because what we do in the game of venture is that we take in money in order to drive growth faster than we could do organic. That's pretty basic. But that also has implications when you look at the uh, organization and the way that we lead people, the way we take new people in, the culture and all these things. And that's also why the typical HR tool doesn't, isn't really fitted for startup because this is a different game. And mostly it's just something we just have to do things more rapidly than we did before. So, an ideation is all about a clan culture. We're one big happy family. We don't care about hierarchy. We don't care about titles. We don't care about responsibilities. We might even don't care about work hours and all these things. We're just trying to create something cool. And we're doing it together. And the way you get success as a leader is by facilitating, is by mentoring, is by creating the good atmosphere. That's very much what it's about. At some point, when we go to the test phase, 
it's much more about creating the vision. You still have the flexibility and all that, but now you need to approach the market. So you also need to have an organization that is fit into taking it, to take in the feedback and, and who does get out there, who is telling the story, who does take it to market. At that point, from a leadership perspective, it's not just about facilitating and mentoring, but now you need to be the visionary entrepreneur with the with the big purpose and all that in order to create the right kind of pull in your in your organization and have people to be com- and make people committed about the, the vision that you're working with. Then when moving into the scale phase, now it's about hardballing actually. It's about the KPI structure. You need the hierarchy now in order to be fast and, and uh, in order to, to have and the right change of command and all that. So people know what they need to do, they know what they'll be measured on, they know how they will be uh, benefited from uh, succeeding on these things. So it's a very different way of organizing. And actually, and that's what I find troublesome and what I see many startups struggling with, is that the, the power of, um, of habits is so strong. So if you are a founder who started the company, who came up with the idea, and you at the early stage was benefited from all, all these things that are beneficial in the early stage, meaning that you are agile, that you're good at coming up with new ideas, that you can work hard often also, uh, these things change, because now it's not a matter of you driving all these things, it's not a matter of how many hours you put into the game. At this point, you need to build processes. You need, to, you need to be good at uh, communicating, you need to be good at giving responsibilities and, and building the good chain of command, but also knowing what you shouldn't get in, be involved with and how to, to authorize others to make the right decisions. These things are totally competing and I see many founders especially struggling with creating the right kind of behavior for the phase that they are in. At next, uh, next time, I'll, I'll tell a bit about some of the conflicts that I, that I see in the de- different development stages and how you can also overcome them. I hope that you uh, will follow my journey with the uh, Startup Growth Compass. I will uh, communicate more and I'll do more videos like this one. I have started working with the first uh, startups on this uh, development framework and I hope I'll also be able to share some of their stories along the way. So please sign up and uh, yeah, I'll keep you informed and, and also let me know if you have some good feedback on what I'm working on right now. Thanks.